surgeons, nurses, and other medical professionals rarely talk about patients' modesty for procedures. However, with the proper communication and education, that patient can have maximum modesty for many procedures. For example, during a colonoscopy procedure, specially designed shorts can be worn exposing only part of the buttocks. A patient could also wear boxer shorts backwards. Also, a male patient could wear a jock strap to secure his male organs. You can see an example of what a colonoscopy short looks like by going to our article, Concerns About Modesty During Colonoscopy, under the Modesty Concerns section at www.patientmodesty.org slash colonoscopymodesty.aspx. This article provides information about what steps you can take to ensure you have maximum modesty for colonoscopy. It is the doctor's and their assistant's job to make the patient feel as comfortable as possible. Medical professionals often skip over details of the procedure and or try to make the procedure sound as clinical as possible. In that effort, many times patients are not told about prepping or positioning for surgery and during surgery or what parts of their bodies might be exposed. Maintaining modesty in these instances is paramount for the patient's well-being. Wearing underwear and or a bra for women can effectively ensure this modesty, especially if routine surgical procedure is for the patient to be stripped naked, such as during shoulder surgery. It is possible for a woman to wear a specialized bra that covers the breasts, but allows full access of the shoulder being operated on. One Illinois orthopedic surgeon invented a special bra for his female shoulder surgery patients after he received concerns from his own employee who felt uncomfortable letting him operate on her shoulder due to exposure of her breasts. We appreciate surgeons who go the extra mile like this Illinois surgeon to ensure that their patients have modesty during surgery. Look up Modest and Patient Wear on Google to check out the modesty bra that women can wear for many surgeries that do not involve the need for access to their breasts. At some hospitals, once the patient is in the operating room, his or her gown will be removed or pulled up depending on what parts of the body are being operated on. If a patient does not have surgery shorts or underwear on under his or her gown, the genitals will likely be exposed for these surgeries. Exception, knee replacement surgery. The reality is most surgery patients do not have the whole picture of what may have happened to them and how their private parts may have been exposed. The medical industry tries to indoctrinate many of us to focus only on how well the surgery went. Medical professionals rarely tell us about our modesty and who all saw our private parts as we were being prepped for surgery and during surgery. Most patients under anesthesia never meet all of the people that were present for their surgery because some of those people came in the operating room after they were put to sleep. A female lobectomy patient in Florida who had early stage lung cancer selected a thoracic surgeon recommended by a top cancer center because of the surgeon's robotic surgery expertise. He has much experience in this specific area and is considered by the medical community as one of the most qualified thoracic surgeon in Florida for robotic lung cancer surgery. This lady had a horrible experience with him. He and his staff, as well as the surgical facility staff, were all very callous when she asked questions and expressed concerns about her modesty and operating room information. She ended up being stripped naked for the surgery. She should have been able to wear underwear or disposable underwear such as Depends. She also did not need a urinary catheter for the surgery. After the operation, when this patient experienced medical trauma and PTSD, as well as severe drug reactions, she talked with the surgeon about all this as well as going into the operation, being completely uneducated and unprepared, facing a life-threatening illness. And this doctor told her that most patients would be happy to be in her position with her diagnosis. And she was one patient who had a problem. Even after the operation, nothing was explained about the patient's concerns, having seen herself naked, completely uncovered and undressed, and freezing both before the operation while being prepped and immediately after the operation when awoken naked and freezing, as well as experiencing hypothermia afterwards in recovery. This surgeon seems concerned only for himself. Compassion did not play a part in this patient's scenario, and because of his and his staff's lack of empathy and help, who knows how this surgeon reacted to other patients' questions and concerns. 
This indifferent treatment is typical of many surgeons. They just want you to trust their expertise. This surgeon has gotten good reviews from patients who likely have no idea how exposed they were during surgery. There are many skilled surgeons, but the truth is many of them do not care about the dignity of patients, and especially once the patient is under anesthesia. Even telling the patient it doesn't matter what happens during anesthesia since the patient is totally unaware. Sadly, many people are completely unaware that their bodies are unnecessarily exposed for surgeries. Surgeries which don't even involve the patient's private parts. Some medical facilities routinely require patients to remove their underwear for all surgeries. This is ridiculous. For example, think about a patient who wears no underwear under his or her gown for knee surgery. When the gown is lifted, the genitals are exposed. Some patients are stripped naked for surgeries involving a finger, hand, arm, etc. Some surgery patients found out because they woke up naked before medical professionals could redress them. A nurse who worked in surgery for many years made this confession a number of years ago. They will wait until you are asleep to remove your gown and place the catheter and when you wake up you'll have that gown back on like nothing ever happened. A number of surgery centers and hospitals across the United States, as well in other countries, have routine policies requiring that patients remove underwear for all surgeries, even if they do not involve the groin area or genitals. This ritual has been practiced for umpteen years. Originally, it was an operating room tradition, seemingly without clear medical indication. Fortunately, as of 2019, some hospitals have changed these policies and now allow patients to wear 100% cotton underwear during many surgeries. One hospital's example of this type of policy allowing underwear states, only 100% cotton underwear is permitted. No nylon underwear will be allowed. The routine removal of patients' underwear was first introduced when nylon underwear could potentially cause static electricity. An author, Brown, in the article, Behavior and Rituals, in the Operating Theater, describes the ritual of making patients coming to the operating theater remove their underwear as the most illogical of rituals. It is still practiced in many surgical units and should be stopped for the good reason that it causes embarrassment to the patient and serves no useful purpose. It has been traditional for patients to put on clean clothing and in some units to remove underwear on the ward before being taken to the operating theater. Any risk of infection from airborne bacteria spread from socially clean clothing is unlikely to be large because in comparison with the operating team, little patient movement occurs during operations, thus reducing dispersal of microorganism from skin and clothing. Here are some arguments medical professionals may use about removing underwear for surgery and how you can respond. One, we may need to insert a urinary catheter. Urinary catheter is rarely needed for most surgeries that only take a few hours. Two, underwear could become stained by prep and body fluids. Most patients do not care about this and would prefer to have their underwear stained than sacrifice modesty. 3. Underwear could have metals in them. Most underwear does not have metals in them. Patients could simply wear 100% cotton underwear with no metals or disposable underwear. 4. Need for antiseptic cleaning of the groin. This is not relevant unless the groin is in the operative field. Patients routinely cleanse their entire body with sterile type solution two to three times before surgery. Five, we need immediate emergency access to femoral vessels in case of emergencies. Underwear can be removed quickly if necessary. There is a minimal percentage of this happening. Six, no underwear helps to maintain a sterile environment. The operating room is not as sterile as the medical profession claims. 
If the no-underwear policy helped maintain a sterile environment, doctors and nurses should not wear underwear either. Medical professionals often carry more germs than the surgery patient because of restroom breaks as well, as interactions with numerous other patients, all without changing scrubs in between. Most infections that happen as a result of surgeries are due to medical professionals not washing their hands and bringing germs into the operating room. We have received stories of some very heartbreaking cases. One lady who had hand surgery woke up naked before they were able to put the gown back on. There was no reason for her to be naked. She could have easily worn underwear, shorts, and bra with no medals for this kind of surgery. It would have been best if she could have opted for local or regional anesthesia and not general anesthesia. Patients should be allowed to wear 100% cotton underwear or disposable underwear for all surgeries that do not involve genitals such as a lobectomy, knee replacement surgery, etc. Patients that have to undergo hip surgery, cardiac catheterizations in the groin, cardiac bypass surgery, and other surgeries that require access to the groin are encouraged to check out the dignity garments invented by an orthopedic surgeon at Cover Medical that cover their genitals. All patients should write on their consent form that they do not allow removal of underwear for surgeries which do not involve the genitals and request a copy of the consent form with the surgeon's signature. Patients need to stand up and break this ridiculous operating room tradition which violates patients' modesty. If your hospital still has a policy that requires you to remove your underwear for all surgeries, you should consider starting a petition at your hospital to end this outdated policy. Go to our website and look for the link that says sample petition at the end of the unnecessary underwear removal for surgeries. When a patient is under general anesthesia and or does not have a personal advocate present, such as a spouse, it is very common for medical professionals to ignore patients' wishes for a same-gender medical team for surgeries. Multiple medical professionals representing a gender different than the patient's gender are often brought into the operating room while the patient is under general anesthesia and his or her private parts are exposed. There have been some cases when patients were deceived by medical professionals that their wishes would be honored and weren't. This is unethical. Some examples include removing a patient's underwear and gown while under anesthesia and then redressing him or her before they wake up, promising a patient a same-gender medical team and then not honoring that. A patient can often find out if his or her wishes for a same-gender team were respected by getting an operative report after the surgery. This report lists all people, surgeon, anesthesiologist, circulating nurse, medical student, etc., who were present for the surgery. Also, look at the facility's patient bill of rights to learn what rights patients have, one right is, know the names, positions, and functions of any hospital staff involved in the surgery and hospital care and refuse their treatment, examination, or observation. This means that a patient can refuse opposite sex medical professionals or even intimate exams. It is common for surgeons to arrive after patients have been prepped, draped, and readied. Sometimes surgeons do multiple procedures a day, one after another, and they don't pay specific attention to prep procedures. They depend on the operating room staff to handle that. A patient may make his or her wishes known to a surgeon, and that surgeon may agree with that patient keeping his or her underwear on, for example. But then this request is never communicated to the operating room staff. Therefore, when the patient arrives for surgery prep, if nothing is in writing, their conversation with the surgeon is often forgotten. The operating room staff then proceeds to prep the vulnerable and scared patient as usual. This is why we recommend that a patient get a surgery agreement in writing and also that a personal advocate be present in pre-op, surgery, and post-op to advocate for all that patient's rights and requests. Keep in mind that the surgeon will be busy operating and may not pay attention to who will be on the operating room team. Often the hospital assigns the surgery team rather than the surgeon choosing it. Here's a picture of a man undergoing arm surgery who was apparently not allowed to wear underwear or surgery shorts. We find this a ridiculous requirement for non-genital surgery. Notice that a gown on the man has been removed and placed over his genitals to cover them. This man most likely had no idea this happened. 
that his genitals were exposed as the gown was removed. Medical professionals often challenge patients who are concerned about their modesty during surgery and try to minimize patient concerns by withholding information about what really happens during surgery. Here are some examples of violations that happen to patients under anesthesia. 1. Spine surgeon who took pictures of a man's genitals with his cell phone. 2. An older male gynecologist making derogatory comments in front of a medical student about a female patient's genitals as he was cleansing and prepping her genitals for a vaginal hysterectomy. This incident was published in the Annals of Medicine, a top medical journal. 3. A sedated female patient was raped during a colonoscopy in Oregon. There was one female nurse present for a colonoscopy, but it did not prevent the rape. 4. Horrified visitors catch sight of surgeons operating on a naked patient after blinds are left open at a hospital. Here are some arguments by medical professionals and our rebuttals. 1. Degrees of nudity occur in most major surgeries, but the exposure does not last long with prompt covering, and during surgery, the patient is fully covered. Our rebuttal is many patients do not want to be exposed even for a few seconds. There are some surgeries that do require exposure of genitals such as hernia, gynecological, urological, etc. But there is absolutely no reason for patients to be routinely required to take off underwear for many surgeries. In fact, some hospitals have started allowing patients to wear 100% cotton underwear for certain surgeries. Here's an example for the doctor who argued that a patient being exposed for a minimal amount of time is okay. Let's say you are showering for work thinking no one is home. You get out of the shower to find out you forgot a towel and walk out naked to get one. And your female neighbor, who has come to see your wife, is sitting there. You then make a hasty retreat to the bathroom. Does the brevity of your exposure make it not embarrassing or uncomfortable? There are so many justifications, such as, it is brief, we are professionals, we are used to it, or it is no different than an arm to us. Those justifications are ridiculous. 2. A patient's modesty does not matter while they are under anesthesia during surgery because that patient won't know what happened. Our rebuttal is many people feel their body is sacred even when they are asleep. If this warped surgery modesty mindset were true, why then is it not okay for a male next door neighbor to view his female neighbor's nude body while she is asleep? Also, this argument that modesty doesn't matter when a person is under anesthesia would mean that all crimes committed while someone is attacked while unconscious, such as with a date rape, drugs, would also not matter because the victim was unaware of what actually happened. These arguments are, if carried out to their indicated conclusions, ridiculous. Three, we need access to your groin for any surgery in case there's an emergency. The groin, which can be dirty with bacteria, needs to be scrubbed with antiseptic before the area is covered. Our rebuttal is underwear or shorts can be removed easily and quickly if there is any surgery emergency. Patients can scrub their groin area with antiseptic before surgery. In most surgeries, the groin will never need to be accessed. Patients should be able to do as much as possible to prepare for surgery so they do not have to worry about their modesty. Many patients are rushed into signing consent forms without adequately reading them. Also, most surgery consent forms do not give details about many surgery factors. For example, there is no known consent form for a urinary catheterization for surgery. Patients must write on surgery consent forms that no urinary catheter may be inserted. All patients should get consent forms at least one day before the surgery. It is difficult for patients to object to anything if they are given consent forms at the last minute. Patients who are sedated or under general anesthesia are entirely vulnerable because they cannot willingly speak up for themselves. 
which is why we advocate for a personal advocate not employed by the hospital to be present during surgery to advocate for the patient's wishes. Less use of general anesthesia and more regional and local anesthesia will be significant for patient modesty issues because medical professionals will not have as much occasion to expose patients who are awake and alert. We recommend that all surgery patients consider opting for local or regional anesthesia instead of general anesthesia for most surgeries, thus ensuring less patient vulnerability and modesty violations. Medical professionals will have less chance to expose patients unnecessarily or ignore patients' wishes if the patient is awake and alert. Also, there are generally less complications and a quicker recovery time with regional anesthesia. Surgery patients who plan on utilizing general anesthesia should contemplate having a personal advocate not employed by the hospital present for that surgery to ensure that requests are not ignored. Insist that they do not give you an IV until you have been prepped for surgery so you can observe all the things they do to you before surgery, such as cleansing your abdomen or even genitals, for certain surgeries such as hysterectomy, prostatectomy, etc., and positioning for surgery. One man who underwent hernia repair surgery shared that he vaguely remembered that a woman shaved him. This likely happened as he was being put to sleep. Look at this picture of a woman undergoing a gynecological surgery and the lithotomy position she is in. Her legs are in stirrups with her genitals exposed to the female doctor who is performing the surgery. There's a blue surgical drape over her legs and knees. It's encouraging that all of the medical personnel in this picture are females. But for many gynecological surgeries, there is at least one male medical personnel present unless the surgery patient's wishes for an all-female team has been honored. Patients are often put in a lithotomy position for urologic, gynecologic, and proctologic procedures. It involves lying on your back with your legs flexed 90 degrees at your hips. Your knees will be bent at 70 to 90 degrees and the padded foot rest attached to the table will support your legs. One man from Maine who decided he wanted to undergo a procedure, Urolift, for benign prostatic hyperplasia, also known as enlarged prostate, knew that he did not want to be put under general anesthesia because there was a zero modesty with a lithotomy position under general anesthesia since the operating room would be full of many people, including female medical personnel. Most urologists do the Urolift procedure under general anesthesia, so this man did some research. He found a urologist in Utah who was one of the few doctors who did the procedure in the office under local anesthesia. The man flew from Maine to Utah for the procedure and shared it was worth going all the way to Utah. This urologist was very sensitive to the male patient's modesty because he arranged for a male physician's assistant to assist in the procedure. Many urologists often use female nurses or assistants to assist with male intimate procedures. Dr. Stephen Cohen, a professor of anesthesiology at Critical Care Medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, says that while many physicians may use sedation in a sincere effort to make the procedure less traumatic for the patients, there is also a perverse financial incentive to use it. Unfortunately, medicine in many places has become a business. The fact is, you get paid more money to do the procedure with sedation, he says. The cost of anesthesia can be more than the fee for the procedure itself, and patients are getting harmed. It is interesting that there is a financial incentive for sedation. Notice the picture of a woman watching her doctors operate on her wrist from going under the knife with eyes and ears wide open on New York Times on March 25th, 2017. She was able to drive herself home after the wrist surgery because she was not under general anesthesia. 
Another man in this article had knee replacement surgery with nerve blocks and was able to read a magazine while he was being operated on. This shows that regional anesthesia has fewer complications than general anesthesia and is less expensive. Recovery time is swifter and side effects are fewer which can reduce the need for post-operative opioids. Surgery is a multi-billion dollar industry. Many surgeons and hospitals are driven by monetary gain. Patients should fight to have modesty wishes before, during, and after surgery accommodated. Surgery is a big moneymaker for hospitals. These facilities will give in to patient modesty demands if patients stick together and demand these choices. Canceling surgery is another option if patients' wishes for modesty are not being honored. Walk out and cancel the surgery if your wishes will not be honored. Find another hospital and or doctor willing to accommodate those wishes. Also, research surgery alternatives and make sure that that specific surgery is absolutely necessary before moving forward with it and make it clear that you do not consent to VERST, a terrible sedative drug that causes amnesia. Now we are going to discuss why every patient should have the option of a personal advocate such as a spouse or other person not employed by the hospital to be present for surgeries or procedures where that patient may be sedated or under general anesthesia. All patients should consider having a personal advocate present in surgery. The advocate could be a spouse, family member, friend, or a medical professional not employed by the hospital where the procedure is taking place. The advocate would be present in pre-op, surgery, and post-op. Patients who are sedated or under anesthesia are totally vulnerable. A personal advocate would help to keep the surgical team accountable in many instances, including not allowing the team to ignore patients' wishes for modesty, as well as protecting a patient's wishes regarding allowing only same-sex personnel to be present for the surgery. With any surgery, the doctors, nurses, and medical personnel enter into an agreement with the patient. An advocate would maintain those preferences and not allow any deviances from the agreement unless medically necessary. A husband in San Antonio told a male scrub technician he could not come into the operating room with his wife, who was having a C-section, and the technician followed his request. Having an advocate present would also help to cut down on medical mistakes, sexual abuse, and deaths because a surgical team would be observed by a personal advocate. The patient advocate could also require that the medical professionals wash their hands in front of him or her to help decrease infections. Many hospital acquired infections are caused by medical professionals not properly washing their hands. Another instance where an advocate present in surgery would be invaluable is when a specific doctor is replaced, because of umpteen reasons, by another doctor. For example, a patient was scheduled to have a more experienced surgeon to do a balloon angioplasty of peripheral arteries in her legs, but for some reason, an inexperienced surgeon substituted him and operated on the patient instead. The patient bled to death because one of her main arteries ruptured. A nurse who was present in the operating room told the patient's daughter what happened, but would not testify against the doctor, perhaps due to the possibility of losing her job. The surgery outcome could have been different if the patient's daughter had been her advocate, been present during surgery, and been able to protest the change of the surgeon. It is ridiculous that many medical facilities have policies prohibiting one family member or a friend from being present for patient surgeries. Many facilities use the excuse, we cannot let you in because of germs. But then they let various people such as medical students and or non-medical professionals such as janitor or sales rep, come into the operating room carrying germs. 
Notice that there is a woman, not in scrubs, laughing in the operating room in this picture. For many years, husbands were not allowed in the delivery room with their wife. Women and husbands actually had to fight to change hospital policies to allow husbands in delivery rooms. In the 1950s and 1960s, men succeeded in being allowed in labor rooms with their wife. Here, alone together, couples shared intimate moments, holding hands, reading together out loud, playing cards. Husbands often rubbed their wife's back during contractions. In the 1970s, hospitals and physicians gradually relented and permitted men to be in the delivery rooms where they were positioned at the head of the table and could encourage laboring women in their work. The men were happy to be there. With women's encouragement, men continued to press for change in hospital policies and practices. Even so, some fathers felt out of place in a delivery room which remained medical territory. In the 1970s and 1980s, bowing to couples, albeit consumers' wishes, hospitals opened birthing rooms and combined labor rooms with delivery rooms. All were decorated more like home bedrooms rather than operating rooms. We need to fight against hospital policies that discourage and or forbid a family member or another person the patient chooses from being present during surgeries. Choosing to have a personal advocate present during any surgery should be the right of every patient. For example, a C-section is major surgery. To be present, husbands are asked to put on scrubs and shoe coverings for the wife's procedure. These same requirements could be followed for other surgeries and procedures. Here are a couple of arguments by medical professionals about why you cannot have a family member in the operating room and our rebuttals. 1. Will my family be allowed in the operating room? One hospital policy says, No, in order to maintain the highest level of sterility, in the surgical environment, this is not allowed. Here is our rebuttal. This is misguided. After all, we should be more concerned about medical professionals having germs rather than an outside advocate who could easily shower with sterile solution and put on scrubs. Why are janitors, medical students, and sales representatives who may be dirty allowed in the operating room? Many have handled other patients prior to that particular patient. Sometimes, doctors and nurses will take a break during surgery and then return. Also, many surgical staff members eat in the hospital cafeteria throughout the day, wearing the same scrubs. Think about how the cafeteria is full of germs and how these same surgical personnel could bring germs to the operating room. Another issue to consider is that many surgery staff members take bathroom breaks. How unsterile is a hospital's restroom? Every time a person flushes a toilet with an open lid, bacteria spray into the air from the toilet. Most toilets in public restrooms do not have lids. Most nurses are not told that flushing a toilet can spread germs. Maintaining a sterile operating room does not hinge on forbidding a patient to have his or her advocate present during surgery. Generally, having more people in the operating room produces more germs. 2. I would caution those who are unsophisticated in an operating room environment, such as a family member as an advocate to be present during the patient's surgery since a vasovagal reaction such as fainting from observing what was going on will cause them to become a second patient needing attention or provide by making verbal complaints at the time perhaps a disruption that would should be routine procedure one doctor's argument here is our rebuttal there are some family members who could handle blood in surgery any patient can find out surgery and operating room information and then determine who would be a good personal advocate. For example, 
if a husband does not handle blood well, it probably would be best for his wife to have a friend who can better handle the operating room setting be her advocate instead. Or maybe the patient can hire a male or female nurse from another hospital to be his or her personal advocate. It is very important to have advocates present for surgeries to make sure the patient's wishes are honored. Surgery patients who are sedated or under anesthesia cannot speak up and advocate for themselves. One of the main reasons hospitals do not want family members to be present for surgeries is because they do not want them to see any medical mistakes which may occur. This is provider-centered health care rather than patient-centered health care. A patient may be promised that his or her underwear will not be removed, but once the patient is under anesthesia, the medical personnel could remove the underwear regardless since the patient cannot speak up. Medical malpractice suits are very difficult to win because only medical professionals are present during surgeries. Most medical professionals are not willing to testify against a negligent medical professional. A woman from Minnesota required a hysterectomy but she did not want to be put under general anesthesia and she wanted to be 100% guaranteed that she would have an all-female surgery team. Also that her husband could be present for her surgery. This patient was upset when her first female gynecologist said those wishes could not be accommodated. She decided to find another gynecologist. She shared her view with medical patient modesty. My husband found medical patient modesty after I decided to walk out of the first doctor's office and it gave us the positive motivation to look for the right doctor. My husband kept researching doctors and found one he was sure was a good doctor, then called the doctor for me. During our first meeting, I actually felt comfortable with this doctor. She was so confident and answered everything in straightforward, frank terms. She guaranteed me an all-female staff. After consulting with hospital management and anesthesia, they agreed to allow my husband into the operating room. The staff respected my wishes. I was allowed to keep my gown on. They covered the windows and no males other than my husband were allowed in. I would never have gone through the operation if it were not for finding this one remarkable doctor who had both compassion and was a master of the healing arts. She didn't put me through unnecessary exams. The Minnesota hysterectomy patient scenario explaining how a female patient was allowed to have her husband present for her hysterectomy shows that we as medical care consumers can fight to have our chosen personal advocate protect us during surgery. Surgery is a big money maker for hospitals. These facilities will give in to demands if patients stick together and demand those choices. For those people who are passionate about having a personal advocate present for surgery, consider starting a petition at your hospital which allows each patient to have his or her choice of an advocate present during surgeries. You can go to our article, Why You Should Have a Personal Advocate for Surgery, on our website to download a sample petition to use. Medical Patient Modesty would love to hear from people who have successfully championed to have personal advocates present for their surgeries, similar to the hysterectomy patient from Minnesota. Please email us at info at patientmodesty.org.